All right, welcome back. On the last video, we worked on getting, uh, selecting a work. You don't have to print yours. You can work just from the screen, but just to make it easier on camera. You chose an image, and what I recommended was a three-quarter, where they're not looking straight at you, but not straight as a profile. What you get is that straight line down the middle becomes this curved line. And what we're going to do today is to start to paint that in. Um, if you'll notice, we didn't practice like we did with watercolor, making all the little sample squares. Since you already have that knowledge, that gives us plenty to build off of. So what we're going to do is use this portrait as that practice. You may end up with one that you really like, but the pressure's not on as far as... Um, coming up with a perfect likeness um, and that type of thing. This is still just a practice. So it is, you do want to do your best job, but you can use some of the same ideas from watercolor as you apply that. And we can kind of speed things up a little bit and not go over the same things. So all the techniques in, in watercolor will apply to acrylic. So you can use acrylic just like watercolor, but you can also use it like oil paints where it's um, thicker, which is the way we're, usually, we're going to use it mostly in here. And on this painting, that's the way we'll use it. So the water is only to wash your brush out. We're not really thinning it down. But a lot of the techniques still apply. So before we start, just to show you what I've got in my setup, and this is what I've got for you. If you haven't picked up, I have this waiting for you. Just let me know um, either before or after school or between about 11.30 and 1.00. I can take these down to the office. I've got your name on it, and everything's waiting to go. So if you're a distance learner, um, you've got a paint set, and I've filled it up with primaries plus white. You've got a couple of empties you can use, either not use or use as you need. You've got a flat brush, large and small, and you've got a round brush, large and small. You are welcome to use your own paint if you want, as long as it's acrylic. I do want you to stick with the primaries because we're still working with mixing colors and uh, you can use your own brushes if you'd like. The palette, it would ruin the watercolor palette, so please don't use that palette with acrylic, because even if you're doing things the right way, it's gonna dry in that palette before you get a chance to rinse it out. Uh, when acrylic paint dries, it becomes completely plastic. In class, when we clean out sets, um, I have a one big tray and we dump all the old paint that's no longer usable in there. When it dries, this is what it becomes. So imagine that in the drain of a sink, or imagine that if that dries in a brush, it's gonna ruin it pretty quickly. All you have to do to avoid this is if you're rinsing down a sink, just run some water with it. It will, it will dilute it. As long as you're diluting it as you wash it, it'll be just fine. This is just pure paint that's been allowed to sit and a, a pretty good volume of it. Um, but make sure when you're using your brushes, rinse them out, if, even if it's going to sit there while you're working. If you switch brushes, just rinse the other ones out. And when you're finished working, take these to a sink and just, when you wash your hands, just a little bit of hand soap, just gently wash these and then shape them back up and they'll stay in good shape. So uh, the replacement cost on this is a dollar a piece, just like the watercolor brushes. Um, but if you take care of them, you don't have to worry about replacing them. The plate, since we don't want to ruin the watercolor palette, we use a styrofoam plate. Anything like this will do. And what we're going to do is keep using it because it just gets better with age. This is one I've been using in class and it's dry. Once acrylic paint is dry, you can paint right on top of it. So I could keep mixing blue. I could also mix white right here and it's not going to hurt anything at all. Because um, that's dry, it's not going to reactivate the blue like it would with watercolor. Then just a cup of water. So it's set up is acrylic paint, but it, it looks a lot like when we set up with watercolor. So what I want to start with is an idea we've worked with before, which is negative space. So before we start, we're going to kind of block this in, and we're going to look at these corners. This is why I wanted to have the crop that we did on that last video, so that we can work with some of the negative spaces and get a pretty good idea of where things go without uh, measuring and to get it pretty accurately. Another thing to think about while we're doing this is 
the idea that uh, the face is round. So if you think about the face from the front view, you've got the eyes, which if you measure are exactly halfway in the head, in the center, top to bottom. And you have a division line. So if you're looking straight at somebody, this is what you see. you got an eye right here and here. And everything is divided into four equal sections. Um, those will translate if you turn into a profile, but they'll also translate into um, a three-quarter view, which is what I've got here of Ms. Abrams. If you think back to when we did some exercises at the very first of class, one of the things I showed you was how to take a circle, and just by putting contour lines, you can turn it into a sphere and make it look round. And that's kind of what the face is. So if you think of the face as a version of the circle, an oval. This center line happens about right here. So it's going to, you're going to see it about like that. And since the camera, the viewpoint, is below looking up, it's going to raise this. It's going to make it look like it's a little bit higher, and it's going to curve down like that. So those are some of the first lines that we'll find. And hopefully you can see the relationship between this and the face. So if you feel like we've walked past the kiddie pool, past the regular pool, past the diving pool, out into the ocean and jumped in with the sharks, we kind of did. We went from doing little samples with watercolor straight into a portrait, which is scary for a lot of people. But it's a really good place to practice because you've got hard edges and soft edges, you've got lights and darks and contrast. Um, there are ways to do skin tones. We're not going to deal with those today because I want to concentrate just on this, this grade on the mixing of the paint. So I'm going to paint this in just one color, just monochromatic. Skin tones though, all human skin tones are a version of brown. So if you mix those in art, it's just kind of taking the brown that you mix from the primaries and controlling those for individual skin tones. There are as many skin tones as there are humans on earth. So um, it's a complex and beautiful thing. We're just going to take that out of the equation now so we can concentrate just on getting used to the paint. So the first thing I want to do is to start to add in these negative spaces to kind of get the face fixed on where it's going to go. Um, normally I would draw this in, nothing wrong with drawing under a painting, but I want to start directly with the paint. So we're going to start by drawing with the paint because that's what a lot of people do is they'll switch to paint like acrylic and they'll just draw. They won't really learn how to paint with it. So we're going to take what you most people know, which is the drawing part, and move on and turn that into painting. So what I'm going to do uh, to paint this is I'm going to use blue. It shows up really good on the camera. What I would do is just choose um, a color that you like to work with and keep it simple so that that's not something that we're working with right now. And you want to find some things to dip the paint out with. Popsicle sticks work really well. Um, this is an old pen that had run out of ink right here. Uh, and what I do is I keep one for each color. Uh, at the end of painting, a painting session, what I'll do is I'll let my paint set dry, just like, or my, excuse me, my palette dry, just like it is. And I'll lay these on here and let them dry. Then you just have to kind of break them loose, and you've got something to dip out. And you can see this has gotten... Uh, some different colors on it, but they're all dry, so I'm still able to dip that out from the blue. So usually what I'll do is I'll stir it around because this paint has a tendency to settle just a little bit and get some out on the palette. Just kind of rake it out on there. And I don't get out too much at a time because you don't want to waste the paint. When you need a refill of this paint, again, you have the option if you want to buy your own, but you can always, always swing by class um, I try to make it more convenient by taking the supplies down to the office for you to pick up. With this, since the paint is here, it's probably better if you, you or who, uh, whomever's coming to pick up your supplies would come fill your setup here. So I know that's a little inconvenient, but you can do that on any distance day. Um, if you can, let me know you're coming, but if, if you don't, that's it. you can just stop in and fill it up. That's no problem. Um, you can also come during any school day. If you'll just tell them in the office, 
and they can call down um, and I'll say yeah come on down and you can come down and I'll let you fill up the paint so um, kind of do the best we can uh, make it as convenient as possible and in just a minute I'm going to set this off I've got it all in camera sitting on top of my painting and usually for demo when I'm doing camera stuff um, I do that which tends to make a little bit of a mess so I don't recommend that when you set up things just set it up kind of logically what makes sense to you to where you're not going to knock something off the table or you're not bringing a dripping brush across your finished work and I'm going to start with the largest round brush and what I want is a little bit of light blue to kind of make some markings so if you remember from colored pencil you want to start with your lighter color whenever you're mixing so white is definitely lighter and just a little bit of blue in there what I'm doing is just getting some paint to draw with by making it lighter I can see it but I don't have to worry about covering it up too much so let me set all this off so the first thing I'm going to look for is where the top of the image goes this is not the top of her head it's the top of her hair her hair doesn't stick up a whole lot but her head would be about right here probably so I'm not going to worry about that I'm just going to look where the image is and it's pretty close to the top now remember I can count on that because I have formatted my picture when I cropped it before I saved it I formatted it so it's kind of the same shape as the paper so if I make a little mark right here that tells me that that's kind of where the top of the head is it's kind of in the center it's a little over to the right and when I come down the side here in the crop that I made her hair just barely kind of comes to the edge like that so I want to put that mark and her shoulder when her shoulder goes off the page it's up maybe about a fourth so if I took the height of her shoulder I could make that take up four spaces so if I find about halfway on the page here and then come down about halfway that's sort of where her shoulder would be and then that translates over her other shoulders a little bit lower but it goes off the edge you can kind of see a line across there and then her face the closest place is her cheek and that's a little bit uh, a little bit less than halfway up so it's just a little bit in from the edge and somewhere about right there now by doing that what you have done is you've made sure that you're not going to create a little bitty face up here you're going to use the whole page so if you connect those and again I'm not really drawing the face what I'm drawing are these triangles this negative space right here so by connecting these two points, I've created this spot right here. And by connecting these points, I create that spot and this little thin spot right here down to her shoulder. And then I can continue this because her face goes down below her shoulder into her neck, into her necklace right here. So that's going to curve back in and it creates this negative space. So I haven't drawn anything human yet. All I've drawn is the space behind the human. All these negative spots. So if you need to, kind of pause on that. If it helps to see, to remind you, you can put maybe a line here that reminds you that her facial features are going to come below her shoulder line due to the camera line. A little bit of her neck right there. <clears throat> and so the next thing I want to do is to find... Um, these lines get her eye level get it curving around and get her uh, the center line of her face and some things that you'll know or that you'll find out about this is that when you find the eye level you're also finding the ear so if you look on your picture on this one the shadows kind of hide it but remember that's a curving line so the eye level I'm looking for is about right here and that comes to right about the top of her ear and if you compare where the nose is, which we'll find in a minute, it's right about the bottom. So the ear is going to generally fit in between the eye level and nose level. So what I want to do is to find out if the face from the viewpoint, since we're looking up at her just slightly, if her eyes are halfway. 
So I'm not going to worry about any numbers. I'm just going to kind of do this. I'm going to put the end of my brush right at her eye level and mark where her chin is. Then I'm just going to raise that up. I'm going to take where I was marking her chin up to her eye level. And it still stays pretty close to center. So it may be a slightly higher than halfway. So I know when I draw this line, I want to draw it halfway in this space that I've created right here. So again, you don't really have to measure any numbers. What you can do is just mark right here. Remember that her chin is down below just a little bit. And if I measure up, I'm going to guess that that's about halfway. Um, and I happen to guess right on it. Usually what I have to do is adjust it just a little bit. I don't usually hit it right on. Um, and then what I want to do, if that's halfway, is just raise it up just a hair, just a little bit. So if right there is where I want to draw the line, then her eye level is going to kind of curve around like that. So it kind of looks like that oval right here. And that shows where her eyes will be. And it also eventually is going to show where her ear will be located. It kind of has that curve. Then to find this line down the center of her face, Notice that it's a lot closer to the left side. This side of the face, you know her eyes are the same size. But if you look at somebody in three-quarter view, this side of the face, the eye will measure smaller than this eye just because your viewpoint is turned away from you. And sometimes they're turned far enough away where you're not even seeing part of the, eye, uh, the corner of the eye. Likewise, take a look at the nose. Your brain is telling you that this, the sides of your nose are even, and they are. But the view here, you're seeing very little of the nostril on her right, over here on this left side of the picture. But you're seeing all of this side. So that's something to notice that you may not think about uh, consciously. Then if you look at her mouth, again, this is the center of the mouth right here. And the side turned away from you appears smaller. So if you're aware of those things, it makes it easier to paint those in. So to locate that, I'm going to do the same kind of thing. I notice that it's uh, in here maybe a fourth of the way across, so maybe about right here. And I know that it's curved because her chin is about here. So what I can do is just kind of draw that in. Then what I have is the size, location, and I've got those two important lines, her eye level and that line that splits down the center. Now that we have those marked, we're getting pretty close to filling in some areas and going from drawing with the paint to painting. So I've got this line, and I've got this line put in. Now what I want to do is to find out just a little information coming down through here. If I can find maybe the end of her nose and where her mouth is, how all that fits together, I can just kind of put some little marks so when I get to it, I know where things are. So again, it's just a matter of observation. For example, if I look at the distance from her eyes down to her chin, from our viewpoint, her nose is a little less than half. So from her eye to her nose is a little shorter than from her nose to her chin. And the same thing you'll find if you go from the tip of the nose, once you find that, to the chin, the mouth is a little less than halfway. So if I measure down through here, let's say if that's about halfway from the eyes to the chin, then I come up just a little bit. Her nose is going to be about right there. And from the tip of the nose to the chin, her mouth is going to be about right there. I'm not drawing her mouth, I'm just kind of putting a mark. Then I want to notice some things here that you really don't see. You see barely see the corner of her eye because her nose is cutting it off. Then you got a lot of space on this side. So what I can do now that I know where the nose starts and ends, I can start to look at some things like right in here. If your face is really turned really far away, 
the nose will be somewhere right here, maybe even go past the cheek, and it'll totally cut all this off into a triangle. Here, I've kind of got a rectangle shape where this is the left and the right, the top and the bottom. And so I can put that right here and start thinking about maybe this as being where that cheek is. So the triangle I just drew there, or the rectangle, excuse me, is right there. So I'm just marking that space. And then I can think, all right, with her mouth, from this viewpoint, the her right is even with her nose, which we know it's about right here. So her mouth goes about that far, but her, it comes all the way over here and lines up with the center of this eye. So when we put this eye in a little bit later, or if you want to go ahead and add it, it's going to go about right here. It's wider than that one. That's going to tell you about where the mouth is. So what you've done is you've adjusted for that, for the fact that her head is turned. And then you can see, okay, her chin, I had it a little bit low here. I don't quite need that much space. So for her chin, all I have to do is just put a line in here. Because all these lines you're painting are going to disappear. Okay. Then it's kind of your choice at this point. Um, she's got a pretty distinctive hairline and so I'm not going to try to put all the details that's not what I want what I want to show is that more of her forehead is showing on this left edge our left and it slants down towards her eye but never touches it so her hair kind of goes like that and then I can kind of see that once I get there it sort of angles down to her neck so we've got this point we know where her neck is, so her hair kind of goes like that. And then we know her ear is going to be somewhere in there. So I just made a few marks to kind of let me know where I am. Pause if you need to. Get to that point. Go back and watch the steps. So that once you get to this stage and you feel kind of comfortable with where things are, uh, first of all, remind yourself, this is probably the first portrait you have ever painted. Um, and portraits give people a lot of anxiety. Um, what I'm looking for when I grade these is not a perfect portrait. I will ask that you submit along with the painting you do. I want to see the photo that you used. But what I'm looking for are things like have you used soft and hard edges? Have you kind of made an attempt and you're working full page? Some of these things that are controllable that we're carrying over both from old drawing exercises um, and also from watercolor. So now what I want to do is just kind of put in some shadows, some lights and darks. And what I want to start with is kind of a medium. And it depends on your style of working. The way that I work is, um, if I'm working especially in monochromatic, I don't wash my brush out a lot. I'll wipe it off because I'm changing back light to dark. Every once in a while I get so much paint in the brush I have to wash it. But this allows me to change back and forth from light to dark as I go. And I'm trying to create a skin, not of the person, but I'm trying to create a skin of paint. Um, this is where you can go from just drawing with the paint into actually painting, is that you want to cover this whole area. But if you do it all, just kind of do like this and put paint on, you're going to lose all your markings. What we're doing is we're trading areas and shapes and shades, we're trading those in, uh, we're trading our lines in, excuse me, for those shapes. So this is on her face. What I'm looking at is it's generally kind of, it's a highlight right here, but it's kind of light and gets darker. Um, and I'm going to find highlights on the forehead, cheeks, the tip of the nose, the chin, all the parts of the face that stick out. So. As I'm working from my image, if I come across here, I want to go a little bit up into where the hair, kind of past my hairline, just a little bit. All right, so it gets a little darker on this side of the face, the shadow because she's turning away from the light, and also her hair. So what I did is just I went in and pulled a little bit more blue, kind of made that a little darker. 
So you're not going to see any details and probably maybe even in the finished part you're not going to see any likeness. We're just kind of working with lights and darks. Um, okay so now on her nose instead of trying to put a line here to show that her cheek is a little darker and the nose has a highlight right here so if I go with some highlights and get that angle of her nose then I can darken just a little bit and kind of work into this area and make that part kind of where her eye socket is and I start to see where the nose is because of the difference in light and dark. I don't need that line anymore. And I could do on this side, it's kind of a little darker right in there. She has a highlight on her eyelid right here and that's going to help me see the top part so I don't lose it. So I can put just a little bit of light in there. And really, again, you have to remind yourself at this point, you're not painting a face, you're just still marking things. You're just trading in lines so that you have areas and shapes. Okay, so this comes down to her chin. Uh, I can put a line in maybe for the center of her mouth. It's a little darker. The underside of a nose, since it's kind of up underneath a ledge, is going to be a little darker. The cheekbone is a little lighter. And notice I'm leaving a little space between these and I want to start to close up because when I'm done I want to have the entire face part of the, of the painting of the paper covered. A couple of reasons for that. One is it's a traditional way to work and that um, with acrylic or oil paints you don't have any bare surface showing whether it's canvas or paint or paper. Second thing is um, it's easier to paint on a layer of paint that's dried on there than it is on the paper itself. If you kind of feel this it's sort of scratchy. under her chin is darker. Doesn't look a thing like her. All it's doing is starting to very slowly represent a human face. I'm not going to bother with her hair now because I'd want to get all this done because her hair overlaps her face. So if I did her hair first then I have to work up in between all that. So I'm going to leave it for last and paint it just over the edge of where I painted the face. So that's why I want to make sure that when I do the face, I paint up past where I want the hair to be. So I've got a little bit of room to work there. Okay, so her neck, as it comes down, I'm using brush strokes that kind of go around to help to show that contour. Sort of blending it in. So you're using hard edge and soft edge. You're using more of a wet on dry, the way we're painting, but it's a little bit wet because see how I'm kind of blending edges as I go. I'm blending the new paint into what I just put on. Okay, so her clothes, I'm going to go ahead, even though she's wearing something a little lighter than what I'm going to paint, and it's lighter here because the, hot, the spotlights are hitting it, um, I'm going to make all that just a little bit darker right now just to kind of keep my place. And I can change that later. So there's nothing I have that you're looking at now that I've painted that can't be changed and most of it probably won't even show in the form it's in. Painting is definitely a process. So this is a good chance to check and see if everything fits. So I can look and see, does it go on the whole page? Do I have room to put the rest of her head? Do the features sort of look like they're in the right place? I notice I've got the bridge of the nose here. It really needs to be about here. I can move that very easily. 
Uh, matter of fact, it's probably dry enough that I could just bring the nose over and just say, okay, it's going to be right there. This is now the nose. So you don't really erase paint, acrylic paint. What you do instead is you paint over it and correct it. There's kind of a, uh, a feeling when people start to paint that you can't change it. Once you put it on there, it's permanent. And the paint is. When it dries, acrylic paint is very permanent. But you can paint right over the top of it. So this, hopefully it kind of gives you a feeling that you can experiment. And work with it just a little bit. So what I'm going to do on this video is I'm going to leave it at this point. So we're at about, let's see, right at 30 minutes. I'm going to put up a third video um, that I'll probably do today. Today is Wednesday. And I'll try to put that up by this afternoon. I'll probably do less talking, but what I'll do is I'll start from this point. I'm going to leave it right here and I'll pick up on the third video and that, that may be one that you could just watch some things because you're working on a different subject than I am. That way you can kind of pick up some tips. We'll, I'll work with the background because I want to do that before I finish your hair. I'm working face first, then background, then the hair. So things sit on top of each other as I move forward in the picture. Um, and we'll talk about soft edges and different things like that. So get it to that point. Um, if you've got enough surface, um, you might even tape down a couple of these or you could take one off and try another. Um, probably best though just to go with one and correct on top of it so you get used to being able to do that. And again, what you're learning when you're doing this, this is practice. Where I'm, I'm looking for the same thing on this that I looked for when we did watercolors and those little samples. Okay, it'll be a 25 point grade instead of 50 and I'm looking for can I tell that you're getting used to how to use the paint? We're just happen to be using a, a finished subject. Okay, so I'll see you on the next video.